Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. Oslo, Middle South Africa has completed the first phase of its new 1,600 square meter Matlafasto Steel Industry Incubation Hub in Vanderbilt Park to help develop and absorb young emerging industrialists into its procurement supply chain. Natasha Urendal tells us more. The 30 million incubation hub is providing tailored development support to an initial 10 on-site and two virtual-based future industrialists within the steel and manufacturing sector. The aim of this is to bridge the journey from startup to industrialist. The brainchild of AMSA, in an attempt to strengthen the participation of young black industrialists within the company's procurement spend, the incubator hoped to break the barriers to entry for emerging entrepreneurs. AMSA Transformation Group Manager Freddie Swart discusses this further. So we spent some time with our local communities, talking to young industrialists and understanding what the barriers to entry are for them. Out of that process is what we see here today. It's a physical infrastructure with 12 uh, workshops and capacitated with industrial equipment, which are the two barriers of entry or the main barriers of entry for young industrialists, namely uh, capital equipment and then infrastructure from where they can operate. The third aspect of that is a very intense development program and the combination of these three is ensuring that we are taking highly capable young industrialists and ensuring that we capacitate them to participate in the mainstream economy. After only a few months, the development program, equipped with dedicated workshops and the use of an 800 meter square communal workshop space and industrial manufacturing equipment, has gained some traction. Having this kind of infrastructure has created confidence in many other sectors in the industry and, and in this specific instance, four months later, one of our incubators has landed a 20 million rand contract with one of the state-owned enterprises. In addition, he's being favoured on a shortlist for supplying a product into the mining industry of approximately another 12 million per annum spent. Now this is a vendor or an enterprise that was turning just over a million rand previously. So, hugely successful from that point of view. Swart assured that plans were in place to expand and diversify the incubation hub to include an innovation centre specifically geared towards startup enterprises and grow its virtual capabilities to allow industrialists to be developed at their own sites. The first phase of the program is what we see here behind us. The next phase is to ensure that the enablers to this journey uh, are introduced in the first of these. Um, is, is, is centered around innovation, but specifically innovation for young industrialists. And so there are essentially 10 areas. The most important specific to young industrialists will be processes, systems, and then obviously the technical area of that, but gearing it specific for them. So that's the first enabler. And so what we will set up on the space in collaboration with some of our partners is an innovation center for young industrialists. We will, uh, in addition to that, begin to, and if you look at the land around, you'll see that it's vast, we'll begin to erect the smaller factories, which will begin to house them as they flow out of this program and grow out of their seams, and some of them seem to suggest that they will do that very quickly. Um, and then to expand the program into a virtual space, because there are quite a few of our uh, enterprises that are situated within local communities whom we would like to support where they are. And so uh, creating an essential core from where we provide that service uh, we'll roll out in a virtual program uh, shortly. Other news making headlines, ACT revised to apply tariffs on imported products and Think Tank hands over title deeds to residents of Western Cape Town. Earlier this year, the PPPFA was adapted to include the designation of domestic steel, wire and other industry products. And although it came into effect in April, the South African Wire Association says it is too soon for steel construction and wire companies to reap the benefits. South African wire products have been designated quite recently and so uh, we haven't seen any benefit uh, from the uh, triple PFA yet but uh, in all probability the, the benefit will come to the primary steel producers first and then followed into the downstream industries which we are supporting. Think Tank, the Free Market Foundation's Kai Alam Land Reform Project, last month handed over the latest batch of title deeds to residents in the Western Cape, thereby taking the project's total title deed handover tally to 1,360. It's a rough estimate and nobody, nobody can say that we're wrong, but nobody can say that we're right either. We estimate there's something between 5 and 7 million people in this country who live in houses that they might have built themselves or belong to the state, they do not have title to, the, to those houses and they might have lived in them for many, many, many years. We have given title deeds to 
passed our untitled deeds to people who've lived in the same house for 50 odd years and never had the privilege of saying it's mine. So this, this project is about giving title holders security, dignity and bankability. Now these are all things that white people take for granted. We've never known it to be anything else other than that. But these are the three cornerstones of the Kailam project. And the first two are the most important, security and, and dignity. Because the, we have numerous, everybody that you ask, where we've handed over title deeds, and you ask them, why do you want it? Because I want to know it's mine. Nobody can take it away from me. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Reports. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.